Great. Okay, so we'll take a quick bowing. And then I do a little bit and then we'll get into moving straight away. So, okay. so welcome. Us. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, this workshop I call Learning Outside the Lines. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Or maybe yeah. 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 Okay. Good. So, I call Learning Outside the Lines. The idea with this workshop actually came from a book. The title came from a book which was written by two, pro two uh, teachers who are really kind of working uh, uh, the system in a different way. So, they're working with especially kids with difficulties like ADHD, dyslexia, all these kind of things. And when they find that the system or the regular system that these kids go through isn't necessarily the right system for that kid, they're trying to look at different alternative ways. So they, they basically call this book Learning Outside the Lines, which, which basically meant creating a system individually for that child to learn better for that child. So uh, how that relates to Aikido is we have a very clear system that we go through. So especially uh, almost those are in the Takemusu style, which is a very, very, very clear system. So this is very useful for us because it allows us to get into the, it allows us to get into practice very easily, fast, and get into a kind of level where we can train really at a level where we need to in terms of martial practice. The bad side of it is it can also become dogmatic totally. So, so we start to do just the seven saburi, we do the 31 kata. This is all great practice in itself, but as long as, as soon as it becomes like, this is the only way that we do it, that's when it's a problem. So we're going to look today at the system first, get it clear, and then we're going to start to play with it. My, my idea with this, again, it's not to break the system. And I don't disagree with the system. I'm a bit of an anarchist, but systems are very useful as long as they're known as systems. As the minute I forget systems are systems, that's when they're a problem. So if they become the best way or the only way, that's when, that's when it's really a problem. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. And we're just going to play with it. The, the main thing for me is that it's not about you performing rules or performing movements. It's about you discovering the movements for yourself in your own body. So when we talk about things like centering, it's figuring it out for yourself. That's the only way you're ever going to really kind of find something that's very powerful and useful for you. Otherwise, it's just story. And stories are nice, but they're not really useful. So discover, it's a really about discovering it for yourself. So that's basically it. So I'm not going to really talk so much today. And everything I say, take it with a pinch of salt. And if it's story, ignore it totally. And if it's a guideline, see it as a guideline, not as a rule. So that's basically it. Okay. So we'll get started. So just start a little bit with warming up. So you're just going to roll work the spine a little bit in the vertical. And I'm going to go through a lot of material quite fast, probably. So if it's a lot of fast, don't worry about it. And I actually don't know where this is going, so it can go anywhere. So whatever you do will also change what I do. So we'll just play a little bit. Michael, Hello. Nina's just sent a message. She couldn't get in, but I've pasted your link here. So she might try and get in in a moment. Okay, cool. cool. Great. I'm just do a little bit and I'll check. Okay, and then just coming straight into the front and back. Just about mobilizing the body. Just exploring a little bit the chest coming forward, back. And just really explore these. So teachers are only ever a guide. So there's really two ways of learning something for me. It's imitation, copying, and experimentation or play. And the rest of it isn't really useful in terms of a martial practice. So imitation is good, but actually experimenting and figuring something out for yourself is actually much more powerful for me. So just play a little bit. And come in side to side. Okay, good. Keep going. Good. Okay, 
come into a rotation. And just look, especially in this movement, this is really a classic movement, internal Aikido work, a very useful movement for us. I want not only that the hips move, the hips create the movement, but really that I can locate the center of the hips. So really get a, get a feeling for it, which is not, again, it's not a mental picture, it's not a concept. Really get an idea that it's the physical center of the body. So in this case, really feel where that is. For this, this is the most useful center. Sometimes in Japanese arts or Eastern arts, they talk about the three centers, the head, the heart, and the hips, or the, the center of the body. So just get a sense for us that it's really the hip area. Really, really super useful for us to be able to move. But get an idea that it's not a surface, it's a really a structure. So it's really a kind of mass. And I need to really get the mind into the, right into the center of it and try and motivate it from that point. So that's it, good. And then we're just going to this wave. Nice and big moves. Really opening the body, working a little bit the arms now as well, playing with the shoulders. Really trying to pass the movement all the way through the spine. Keeping the knees nice and free. Okay. Okay, now what I want you to do, you've got those five directions. So you've got the vertical, you've got front and back, side to side, rotating on an axis, and then working inside and outside the body. So with these five directions, just really play with them. <clears throat> the best way is for me is to start with one direction. So for example, the vertical, and then I add another to it. So I add two directions. Boom, 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 boom. The best thing, this is, again, it's only a guideline. I can do with the, one of the things with plays, I, it, get, it becomes quite erratic. So I start to kind of play, okay, side to side, from back, so I'm, co I'm constantly playing with stuff. For me, it's more useful that I go deep into something. So I pick two directions and I just kind of explore it a little bit. But again, this is just a guideline. You'll have your own way of getting the most out of it. Just allow yourself to find a movement and really follow it. And this is a point where you go like, follow it to the point of boredom and, and you get totally bored, you wanna just shift it, great. But you can also go through boredom as well. Boredom's a really great teacher. Just getting the body into a position where I go, oh, I actually know what I'm doing. And maybe I actually don't know what I'm doing. That's the point you wanna kind of get to a little bit. Yeah, 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 that's it. That's it. And you all have your own totally unique way of doing these movements because you have your own unique bodies, your unique minds, and your own unique experiences. And maybe you have some unique injuries as well. I mean, I do so. You probably do too. So you will use the body totally differently than anyone else. And nobody can teach you this. You just got to find it out yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Nice. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's also a few things you can play with. One of the great things you can play with is like qualities of movement, which is a really wide topic and it can get quite, um, it can get easily very broad, but think about different movements like pulsing. So there's kind of pulsing movements, there's kind of vibrating movements, there's long wavy movements. There's kind of wiggly movements. There's lots of, there's like an, there's an, there's an infinite amount of qualities of movement, but just could just play with it a little bit. That's it, that's it. And really at the end of the day, all of this is about feeling your own body and really experiencing the principles on a, on a really di in a direct way, totally direct. 
Yes. Yes. Great. There we go. Good morning. Hey, yes. Good morning. Got it. Great. Okay. Okay, great. One of the things I want to do today, especially, because we're going to do a lot of play, if play becomes ungrounded, it becomes really, the risk of it going into fantasy land is very high. And by fantasy land, I mean something that's non-functional, something that's not effective in terms of a martial domain. So I'm really going to try and, uh, for us, the, the martial domain is like a, the ballpark that we need to play in. And if we go out of that, it's interesting, but it's not really useful in terms of martial arts. So what I want you to think about is like functional considerations. So these mean like things like, is it efficient, the movement? Basically, can I do it without with as little movement as possible? Is it functional? Which is basically, does it work in terms of a martial interaction? And there's lots of things like, also, is it like logical? Does it make sense? Uh, there's other, there's there's tons of things you can look at. One of the ones also, is it effortless? Does it require serious amounts of effort? And then basically, can I do it for a long time? As if I, if, if it's spending a lot of energy, it might, be very, it might feel great, but I can't really sustain that kind of practice. So even though this is really a non-martial practice in this case, just have a sense, the key thing for us is the structure of the body. So if I'm going against the structure of the body and it feels very weak, actually feels very useless, or I'm using the body where I feel like I'm using a lot of tension in the body. These are like non-functional aspects. So play with this, but really get a sense that you're actually able to bring this next into a kind of martial domain. And just, and it, there's, there's lots of considerations you can come to in terms of martial arts. But a lot of them come down really to just structure. And then the next thing is what I'm doing with the mind, which we'll kind of cover a little bit as we go forward. But. Just have the sense that as you do it, there we go. That's it. So most of you are starting to do this now. Just start to cause to move the feet around. Okay, and in doing so, start to move the hands. So again, play with the hand work. It's, it's not about going into positions, but it's just about moving the body. And again, really go to like a functional consideration. I can move the body like this. This is kind of nice, where well, it feels great, nice and loose with the floor. But also try and move the body in a way where I feel really balanced as you go. That's it. Start to use the hands a little bit. And just notice that even as we go towards a minimally functional movement, the tendency to bring in tension and start to take the hands through positions, fall into positions. Notice even now you probably start to go into Tainahenko. Maybe going to a little bit like ikkyo work, so you will catch yourself out. Try not to if, try if you find yourself going into a form. You can you've got two options. You can go into it, or you can go out of it. So you can really play with the form. Like, yeah, like tiny henko. Okay, tiny henko. Follow it. Tiny henko. The body wants to go to tiny henko. Okay, take it. Follow it. Take it. Follow it. Or I just abandon it. Forget about it. Go somewhere else. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. Okay, functional consideration. In this case, think someone's in the room and they're ge very gently pushing you or poking you with a stick. Okay, so I can do things like, uh, if I'm moving in this kind of position or I'm moving with a sense like I'm looking down at the ground. Okay, but get a sense that there's also things in the room. So you're also in a, in a room with like dangers as well. So there's things, there's people in the room or there's objects in the room or there's things on the ground. You can also just trick yourself a little bit. You can put things on the ground. I throw them around a little bit and then I move around and I try and feel where they are. But I also know that I'm gonna trick myself up a lot of the time. But, so you can put things in the ground. They can be shoes. They can be objects like this. And I just start to move around. And this will change the way I use the body totally. But you can also stand over them, no problem. On them. Just play with the whole body. That's it. The main thing about being balanced 
And using the body functionally is feeling the whole body. Really get a sense for the whole body in the space. There we go. That's it. There we go. Good. Nice. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. I'm also one of the great things about being doing play and experimentation is you can't be wrong. Okay. And if I'm looking in terms of functionality, you can only be more functional or less functional, more efficient, less efficient, but there's no good, bad, right, wrong. That's the beauty of play. So really think about this. You, you can't really make, you can, let's say you can make mistakes. But you can't make, if I make it into a failure, I failed. This is interpretation. Forget about it. But so you're going to make a lot of mistakes today. You make a lot of mistakes anyway. We all do. But it's not a problem. As soon as I make it into a problem, it becomes a failure. I failed. Don't think about it at all. So really just think about being more functional or less functional. So I can move the body with a sense of sliding. So people often say like sliding the feet. Slide, sliding the feet is a good way to move the body. Okay. So I'll try it. Sliding the feet. As soon as I come to an object, oh, I can't slide the feet anymore. So I'm talking in terms of functional considerations. And if I basically, I'll tell you this. If someone gives me an instruction, I'll test it to destruction. So if you give me an instruction like slide the feet, I'll test it to destruction. So I'll use it everywhere. I'll use it on the beach. I'll use it in the sand. And then I'll figure out whether it works for me or not. So this is a basically a thing. So when I give you a guideline, I want you to really test it. Test it against your experience, test it in your own environment and test it with your own body. And if you can make it not work, that's not a good instruction. So if you can find that this doesn't work in some situations, it works more in others. This is a not, not so, such a great instruction. If I can't destroy the instruction easily, it tends to be a good instruction. So something like sourcing the power from the ground, passing it through the hips and expressing it with the hand. That's a really one I can't really destroy it but I've tried a lot. I can go against it, but I can't really destroy the principle of it. So just play with it a little bit, moving the body around, play with how you move the feet, how you're using the hands. Just keep going with it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can explore kicks. If you wanna go into a little bit of striking work, go for it. You can also just contact things around the room. Just come into contact with them, press onto the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You also bend the body, go down on the knees a little bit, touch the ground, the space, and you just move everything. And for me, martial arts really is about interaction. It's about interacting with things, other people, the space, but fundamentally my own body in relationship to everything else. Yeah, 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 good. That's it, that's it, that's it. Really just play with it. And depending on your mood or your thing, you'll start to play with different things. So I might just get up one day and I feel like striking things. I just feel like hitting things. I might just someday play with like, I wanna wave through the body. I wanna be a bit more flexible, but just follow that, see where you go with it. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's it, great, nice. Yeah, 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 good. Great, so, there we go. Okay, great. Okay, great, take a moment. Here we go. <clears throat> Okay. So in this first class, it's basically playing with forms. So we're going to use the bokken because it's the most clear form structure we've got. Taijutsu is a little bit big, lots of stuff, lots of things. Joe works really flexible. You've got lots of room. Ken works very, very simple, super simple. So we've got some very clear vectors that we use in terms of strikes, and then we don't really deviate from them too much. We're going to work with them, get them clear, and then we're going to deviate from them as well. So in terms of line work, and this, just put the feet in shoulder width apart. The first one really obvious for us is the first is really, which is just this vertical line through the structure. 
So really the first line we learn in terms of weapon work is this vertical, right through the structure, right through, right through, right through. And just play with this a little bit. So. And for me, this is easier felt in shoulder width apart, square on, but feel free, go into handy, move the body around a little bit. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. Okay, think about it like this. You can think about it like you're performing the first Saburi. So I do a movement. Someone codified the first Saburi with Cyclo Sensei. He did this movement. So I'm trying to copy someone. I've got a very clear image of my instructor in my mind, how they do it. I try and copy them. This is great. But you can also view it from a consideration of just passing the line arc through the body. So this is just going to the mechanics of the movement. So I think about the swords here. How do I pass it through the spine? Right in the center of the body, and then how do I maintain that? How do I maintain that? So getting in touch in the spine, and then really show maneuver work would be like ideally totally vertical, straight through the line of the body. So again, follow that instruction and really go into it. So get this idea where it's really, really, really like a straight line right through the center of your body. And again, that means knowing where the center of your body is, but use the source to also discover it. There we go. That's it. That's it. That's it. There we go. Great. Okay, the second line we learn is the Jokman. So in this case, what I want to feel is that it's actually a funny thing because the Jokman is not really a diagonal. It's just really a deviation, deviation from the Shomenuchi straight line. So what you do in this case is just find the hips this way. So just play this, you're gonna use a straight line, but I'm now gonna, you've got this through the spine. And then in order to get the Jokmanuchi, I just need to angle the hips. So all you want with the Jokmanuchi is that's the Shoman. It's a very, very subtle distinction. But in this case, the Yokomunuchi is not diagonal like this. This is a different movement. We'll go there, we'll go there in a couple of minutes. Just get a sense now if you create the Yokomun. And notice what you need to do to create that movement. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Ah. There we go. <laughs> Good. Good. There we go. Uh, great. <laughs> Good. Uh. Okay, so allow yourself now to let the sword go circularly as well. So you've got this movement now. So really key for me, one of the one of the guiding principles we've got, especially in Aikido, of functional movement is whole body movement. Now, the rule for that means that if I'm using the arms to create the movement, that I've broken that rule. And you can play with it. Okay, whole body movement. Now, the problem with instruction is that if I talk about whole body movement and then I do something with the arm, you should call me out on it. So if I do something like that and then I start blah, 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 but whole body movement centering, and I'm not doing that, 
That's a problem. So get a sense that what I really need to feel is that the whole body creates that movement. Whole body creates the movement. So really play with this for, to the point when I can really feel that movement's coming from the whole body. So everything's going with it. Everything. Everything goes. Everything goes. And it's never just about the arms. Yeah, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. And again, really play with it. So you can use one hand, you can use no hands, drop the sword. Ah, yeah, that's interesting. Ah, oh, good. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this come this will come up later. So I'm not gonna tell you this is wrong. It's it's inappropriate for Yokomanuchi. So also with functionality, it's also about being appropriate. So watch this. I can do something like that, something like that, or something like that. So we can use these later. These aren't wrong movements. There are no wrong movements. But in terms of Yokomanuchi, it doesn't really work in that way. So it doesn't work by orbiting the head. Yokomanuchi works by working the center of the body. So Yokomanuchi in this case works by in this place. So there's a really thin line in terms of Yokomanuchi work. And it's subtle, but it's really, it's really distinct. It's not a kind of round. Sometimes Yokomanuchi gets described as a roundhouse, but it's really not. It's really not a roundhouse movement at all. So. It's really something very, very specific for sword work. Just get a feeling for that. That's it. That's it. That's it. And play with it so that you're doing it kind of, in this case, make a mistake with it. The arms are doing something else, but know that that's what you're doing. So it's like consciously making mistakes. That's a good thing to do so that you know where I don't want to go in terms of a specific movement. Yeah, that's it. You also feel, move the feet, move the legs, step in with it, step back, really, really play with it. So just take my instructions today quite lightly. You can interpret them really pretty freely. And I hope you do because I'm gonna follow you as you do it. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. There we go. Great. Nice. Okay, the next vector we learn in terms of in terms of our practice in terms of the sword is the ski. So it's using a, a horizontal movement like this. So it's anything that's <clears throat> out this way. Now for us, a ski is a very specific thing. We've got lots of variations on the ski, but in essence, it's really just an expansion out with the arms. So it's that, 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 that. So the ski work is very, very simple for us. Just that kind of movement. And you've got lots of variations in it. You can rotate the sword up. You can do it with the hands like this, but all of them in essence are the same, which is basically just an expansion out from the hip. Expansion out from the hip. Play also in terms of sword work, you can treat this not like a sword, you can treat it like a jerk. So in terms of ski work, you've got the same idea, something coming out in an arc. It's a bit clearer in terms of the jerk work. That, but in terms of the bottom work, that, that. You can do this with the feet down just to get the idea of what the hips need to do to assist the movement. Do the arms do it? Is the head bobbing as I do it? Or am I, sh my integrity sh there? Boom, 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 boom. That's it. You got left side, right side, you with a step, no step, going back. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so again, one, one uh, really important thing in terms of functionality is that you actually, you're actually doing something with the sword. So I'm passing a, a movement through the sword in, in order to make an impact or at least minimally make contact with the thing. So that needs, the structure needs to be also in place. So yeah, I can get away with this kind of stuff in terms of play, so the body's kind of loose and really feel that what you're doing something functional. I really need the body to be down. So imagine, or you can actually do this if you've got a soft structure you can hit. Imagine that you're actually at the point of when you, when you find this position, you've made an impact with the tip of the sword. And not only are you pushing into it, that object is also pushing back at you. So I need to be in a really sound, structurally sound position. So. Again, play with it, but be really aware of the, the martial aspect. I really need to feel like it's functional later. Otherwise, it's just kind of mobility work, which is useful, but not super useful in terms of 
effective movement. That's it. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Nice, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. There we go, great. Okay, good. So we're going to go against some of the lines. We use them in the system, the Larian system, but we don't put them in the Subaru. So we don't really, we don't tend to practice them. The first one is this horizontal. So this is where we go into like slicing movements. You can think of this as a slice or as a slashing movement. I prefer to think of it as a slice. Because if I think about slicing an object, like slicing bread, I want to really finely shum through the whole thing. So I'm thinking about slicing in a way that I'm not doing when I do this kind of movement, which is not really a slice versus it's an impact. So when I think about this movement, I really think about slicing through it. So it's a bit more like a, I've got a katana. So it's a bit more like a live blade and I'm really passing it through. So we use these in the system, again, like impact. So I use them as percussions, but just play now anything that's horizontal. It can be here. You can roll with the body through, through. We do these movements all the time in Taijutsu. But, and we do them in the, in the, again, we do them with the box and work, but we tend to leave it until quite later in the system. When we're playing with variations, we're playing with kumitachi, all this kind of stuff. But just get a feeling you can play with them now. Slicing through. That's it, nice. And really no rules, so just let your body follow the movement. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, good. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay. Yeah, and again, keep in mind the functionality of the movement. So if I'm gonna use this like a kind of impact percussion and then a follow through, like a kind of golf swing, so I would kind of hit it and then drive it through. But there wouldn't be a cut, there wouldn't be two things. There's not two things in this case, impact and then follow through. There's just movement. So there's just a swing there. So I'm going to really, really slice all the way through, no stop. The, the object happens to be in the way, and I will just carry through it boom, like this. The other consideration in that case is that I need the structure to be sound as it makes contact. So if I'm doing something like that, this will just be hitting, hitting with the body. So I really need to connect that to the ground, boom, and then I kind of follow through. So just imagine you've got something very heavy in the body and it's gonna really, really boom, impact the ground and slice out. And play a little bit with speed as well because speed's a little bit helpful in terms of playing because it will tell you a lot about how I'm using the structure. There we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta think a little bit like Uma Thurman in Kill Bill. Just in the space slicing. Slice, 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 slice. One of these old samurai films from the 60s. Just slice away. I really enjoy the moves. These are really enjoyable movements. Really, really great moves for the body, for the hips. That's it, Adrian. Nice. There we go. That's nice. Very nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and again, just... Just notice one thing, especially with play, it, 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 where it can, again, it can get lost in fancy and the Uma Thurman probably won't help, but get a sense that when you do these, I can get lost in also like doing lots of things. Like I do that kind of slat and then I do it. Now, the moment I get into thinking about it, it's no longer useful for me. So I need to really feel it. So for me, this is where Kata and Subaru, this kind of stuff is really great for us because I can switch off the thinking mind. And I can go straight direct to feeling and experience, direct experience. So what my tendency to do in terms of play work is pick one thing, play with it to the point of boredom, and then pick another. But the, in this case, the variety of the play will, will take me out of the train rather than into it. So try and get a sense that what you're doing, I want to do one thing. I want to do one thing. And when I feel like, yeah, I got it, I got the most I can, or I'm just bored of it, go somewhere else. Play with a different idea. Rotating, 
And then really feel free, you can just do one side. And if you find a really tricky movement, like for example, this rolling in, that tricky, really break it down. So pull it, pull it apart, pull it to pieces, break it down and then see if you can put it back together again. That's it. Also one of the problems with plays, I start to work directly in my comfort zone which is nice, but again, it's not really useful. So I really need to be challenging myself all the time. I need to be challenging my sense of balance, my sense of connection. And I do that through complexity or speed <clears throat> or really, really giving myself really strict rules. Like I can't move my hands without moving my feet. Or I really need the movement to come from the center. These are really strict rules that I really have to follow. So sometimes rules are helpful in terms of play. There we go. Great, 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 great. So we'll do one move we don't really do in our system because it's a different kind of sword cut, but in this <coughs> case, it's the kesta. So this, this is really a truly diagonal cut. So this goes through the body this way, through this way. This cut is designed, if you look at the samurai armor, it's, it's designed for two things because if I've got a big helmet on the body, I can't raise the sword up above the head like this. And if I hit someone on the head like this with a big helmet, it's not really effective. So you'll find a lot of the sword schools which deal with armor, or some of the old sword schools, they'll deal a lot with Kessa, which is, which is really working against the weaknesses in the, in the armor. So it's working this part of the body and tends to work out the ribs. So rather than what we do in Aikido, which is always attack the center line, Kessa tends to be attacking through the part of this way. You're actually trying to chop the top half of the body on a diagonal. So what you're doing with Kessa is like this and this. So it, it, I'm using the center to do it, but it's really off the center of the, the target. So I'm not, in this case, striking through to the center. You're passing it from here, that. So just play with this one. You've got two angles. You've got this one, this one, and you've got this one, this one. Okay. We don't tend to use it in our system. It's not really part of the system <clears throat> in terms of our work, but it's a really useful sword cut. <clears throat> Just play with it. And this is totally different to our kind of Yokomi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. Yeah, just notice this move because this is really easy to do like a hacking movement. So you go, yeah, wah, wah. In order to make this really effective, efficient, I really need again, the whole body to engage with it. So I really feel that what's happening is, is I connect the center to that and then the whole body does it. So it's much more like a kind of slicing, like these kind of moves, slides, slide, slides, slides. So really play with it, but you're really working this angle off the body or off center, totally off center in this case. It passes through the center at the point of impact and then passes through that, really that, and just let it go with it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and again, play with the feet. You can have one foot forward, the other foot forward. That's it. Ah, yeah, tricky. Ah, okay. Yeah, another point. Our system works this way. Watch this. Most of our system works percussion. All, all, all Almost all of it works percussion way. So it works this way. Yokonuchi, percussion. Ski, percussion. Percussion. Per Percussion. When I go into Kesagir, it's not percussion, it's slicing. So you're really working with a slice. So it's not this. This is not really, Kesagiri doesn't really work like that. Kesagiri works by passing the whole body through it. So it's much more like a kind of whip through the system, through the system, through the system. So this, in this case, really imagine you've got a ketan. So you've got a, like a, a three foot razor blade in the hands, and I don't need a lot of effort. So I don't need to impact with it. I just pass the body through it. Just pass the body through it this way. That's it. So much more of a slicing movement than an impacting percussion. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. There we go. There we go. Good. If it's fast enough, you can actually hear the whip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can read. Yeah, and if you've got a katana, you've got the groove in it. You then you'll really see it like. Whoosh. Will really slice through the slice through the air. Yeah. Do you really get that kind of whip? Boom. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. Yeah. The body's also yeah, the body drop. Good. That's it. 
So if you've ever done a little bit of EI and you, I don't know if any of you have done EI and you've done the map cutting and you get to it and you use your Aikido and you go like, well, I'm going to hit it. And you go like that. And then the sword just gets stuck in the straw. So it gets stuck in the mat and you go, oh, there's a, ah, oh, shit. So, and then you see a master do it and then just go boom, through it with zero effort. So also one of the functional consider is like work with zero effort as well. So I can do this, like, this is what I call like hacking. Wah! Wah! Yeah, it feels great, totally. But just get a sense that you can also just pass through the movement. Boom. Boom. So it's much more like a lightsaber than a, than a machete. So it's got that kind of quality. Yeah, so just passing through. Again, all the weight's going to come from the body anyway, so you can do this as long as the body's very relaxed and very heavy, very grounded. But just know that you can really relax a lot of the upper body as you do this kind of move. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Nice. So you've also obviously you've got the other way. So you've got this diagonal. You've also got this diagonal rolling up the body this way. So this is a really nice movement to practice with the sword. So you've got the arc that goes this way. If you have done like Eido or anything like this where you use the sword, you're probably quite familiar with these kind of movements. If you've not, just think of it as the reverse of it. So you've got this movement, this movement. And just play now with the, with the two sides. So you've got this angle, draws up the body, and this angle, which comes through. So again, don't worry about making a mistake or doing anything wrong. There's no wrong with this. Just swing the sword through. And again, as long as I'm just questioning like functional considerations, is it useful? Is the body in a really awkward position as I do it? Or can I make it fit within the structure? So, and what do I need to do to make that happen? There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you'll notice a lot with the upwards are actually very uncomfortable. So if if I try and take it this way, uh, the body's actually really out of structure as I do it, and it's not very useful. So if I try and hit something like this, uh, the body's really out of structure. Useful for hitting a ball, like it's in the air, boom, I hit the ball like this. So what you would use this move intent, what you would tend to use this move for is attacking the wrist from underneath. So the, the wrist sort hit and I attack the wrist underneath. There's actually a really contained move. I attack the wrist from underneath. So I'm, I'm really thinking in this case of what is my target as I do that movement. So if I'm gonna slice through, so it's just about possible, but really, really difficult to slice through a body that way. But I can hit the periphery of the body. So I can go onto the hand. I can go right onto the underneath of the arm or onto the elbow. So really think about what is, what's my target as I do these kind of movements. And these are in the system later, but they're quite hidden. Don't tend to practice them a lot. That's it, that's it, that's it. Again, one of the, also the functional things is, is the body comfortable as it does the movement? Is it relaxed and is it comfortable? we go that's it again play with one hand play with two play with none <laughs> work it that's it. that's it Marcel that's it that's it yeah 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 there we go good there we go there you go good Good. So just play now with all of these. So you've obviously got all your showman, yokome, and ski. Those are probably tightly ingrained in the body, at least in terms of a structure of the body. So just get the sense that you can play with those. So you've got the skis, shomenuchi, yokomenuchi. That. And just notice the body has a really, really tight, narrow uh, structure that it's working with. So shomenuchi, yokome, and ski, they work with a very, in a very narrow way with the body. I mean that the structure is pretty much working in the same way. Very, very tight. 
and very specific for those three movements. Now, as soon as I start to open those out, you're into slice work, maybe into kessa work, the body's really gonna have to change around it. So just play with it, use the ones you're really familiar with. And then every so often just introduce something that you're not so familiar with. <clears throat> so show when you're coming ski, and then you've also got slices, kessa, different kind of movements also with the ski work. Like this kind of work, this kind of work there. And just really use the body, work around. If you find something really uncomfortable or challenging, just go into it. That's it. And the great thing about us is training in a system very logical is it won't really go away. You can always come back to it. So the Saburi 7, Saburi, all this stuff, you can't really lose those if you've got them really practicing the body. They will just show. The problem is if they become a total limitation on what on my possibilities. Because in terms of spontaneous Budo encounters, I need to have no limitation on the body. There we go. And again, try and ground it in a kind of functional aspect. So what am I doing when I do it? And how am I incorporating the body to be appropriate to that action? That's it. That's it. Very nice. Again, one-handed, two hands, no hands, drop the balkan, play with the body, really work with it. Totally free to do what you want. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, Adrian, good. Yeah, we go there later, good one. Bam, with this other side. Yes, 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 great. There we go. Two swords, yeah, 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 great. Yeah, 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 good. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a really, it's a shortish set. We've done it quite a lot. Most of you are probably familiar with most of the movements. I'm going to show it quite a lot and we'll go through it. Feel free to take it, work with it, or really do your own thing with it. I don't actually mind. So again, I'm really interested in the quality of the movement and your experimentation and getting into the place where you can really have a direct experience of the body. So we're just going to start with this. I'll show you it. Goes like this. You've got shomenuchi, ski. I slice to the rib. I go yoko menuchi, and then from here I make a big step in, rotate to the back, find the, find the block, top of the head, and then I finish with a yoko menuchi, and this final step goes like this. So this is just a movement I create, that we created kind of with Lewis, and we mixed it, and I mixed it as well, and I took it and played with it, and it's a form I can keep coming back to, because it involves lots of interesting movements, so I'll show it a few times. Feel free to copy it, again, don't copy it, do what you want. Really, you're really free, so it goes like this, shobanuchi, ski, slide, yokomenuchi, big step in, locking, and from here, yokomenuchi, finishing with the ski. And just coming back. So really do what you like with it. You can break it down into parts. Can make it fluid or you can change it just play with it a little bit okay good I give you what I give you just just practice just the, the last part. So you're in you're in Kenka Mai like this. You're gonna go these last movements, you're gonna step in, 
roll to the back block, and then you go here, yokomenuchi ski with this one. So I've shown this a few times. <clears throat> just stick to this step, just for now, just for, the, for a few minutes. Rolling in, block. Stepping through, yokomenuchi, and then you find the ski variation. Just do that. Yeah, and just practice those three movements. The key thing is balance, center, and really feel that you're connecting the whole body. Whole body. Whole body. Whole body. So really looking in terms of function, but just those three movements, because those are the kind of interesting ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just watch this. So there's there's mistakes. There's not right, wrong, but there are mistakes. So in terms of effective, less effective, there's things that just won't really work so well. So if I do in this case, what you're doing is protecting against the Yokomunuchi. So if I do this, as I do it, the block will not really be effective because the structure in the arm is not really able to support the block. So as the, as the Yokomunuchi would come in, this arm would collapse and the shoulder would press into the body and you would get hit in the head. So you can try this out. Useful to experiment and know with it. Do it with a soft padded sword and get someone to really come in and whoa, wham, hit you with this. Or and if you do like that, it will collapse. I can tell you that you can listen to it, but better you better you play with it. Just get one of your kids or your wife or someone just to hit you with a padded sword, and you can try that or that. So in this case, what I'm looking for is something really effective. So in this case, that this is useful for the last movement, but for the block, it goes like that. So the structure of the arm is very solid. So it won't collapse under the pressure. If I do that, it will collapse. That won't collapse. Uh, and I'm really, really, really interested in blocking the head. So I'm really trying to protect the head. And then from that, release it out, find that. And then from here, find that, that way. That's it. And this is where experimentation is really, really useful because the block will either work well or it won't work well. I will get hit more often than I don't. So then it's not really a useful block. Michael, I seem to have missed the footwork for this block. Ah, uh, yeah, in this case, you can play a little bit with it, but in this case, like an Irimi Tenka. So you're going to be here, you so here, you're just going to step in, roll back, and then you're in this kind of position. So you're in the right side, you're going to step in with the back foot, and then find it this way. But feel free, you can also play with it, so you can also just bring the foot back, come to that position. That position. You make a full turn. That way, so just play with it. Thanks. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, oh he lost. Michael. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the, uh, from one to that, can you just yeah. do it slowly? Because I just want to see what your hand, what you're doing with your hands, how they change when you go. <laughs> like that. You go. Here I've got half the speed. <laughs> it goes like that. So it feels, it's a bit like working the job. So it goes like that. that. So I'm a little bit in the fingertips as you do it. So I don't want to go like palm contact and then boom, I go like fingertip, 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 and I catch it into the into the palm. Okay. A little bit like when we do hassle. Mm -hmm. Oh, like okay. All right. Thank you. Good. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Good.
Okay, just the last minute or so in this class and then we'll take a quick break. Really just play with it, open and explore different possibilities now. Again, try and ground it in some kind of reality or functionality. But play now with also these categories. So all this set is, is designed off the showman, ski, slice, yokeman. It's all really within our, within our known kind of system. But feel that you can also start to open everything out a little bit. And it doesn't have to be fast, again, but play a little bit with something a bit more supple and a bit more open. So forget a little bit the Takemusu system. It's still there, it's really our ground. But know that you can also go to other things. And the same structure is gonna be used throughout. So to just explore it, just really explore it. Body work. Functionality and possibilities. There we go. Yeah, 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 good. There we go, nice. There we go, great. Okay, good. stop here my advice with this kind of stuff also hopefully this is stuff you can use in your own time as well is really play with these on these levels so i mean we all want to learn the takimusu system most of us and learn it well and get it to a point where it's really ingrained in the system so i don't need to think twice about it i just go direct to feeling but it's also really useful to think look at other budo and other systems to get ideas also with how they how they use the body and maybe they use them in a different way to us in terms of functionality Maybe they don't, maybe they use them the, the same principles, but it's really useful in, in terms of comparison because otherwise I have no comparison of what I'm doing. And then if I have no comparison, I can't really pass any kind of judgment on the movement itself and the quality of the movement. So for me, this is why I relate it a lot. I need another practice. So I use archery as another practice because it gives me another system that deals with similar issues, but from a different angle, totally different angle. So having another system to compare and contrast with is really useful. And it can just be looking at YouTube videos or reading books or whatever, it, but try not make it theoretical. Try really play with it. So I, I play a lot with different systems and different ideas because they're really useful to know what I don't want in terms of the, the Takemusu stuff. And what's useful I keep and what's not useful I disregard it because it's just not useful. So that's basically it. So my advice, so this is, is really create your own form. So you can create a really easy three set, four set, six set. Just explore it. And if it falls apart, breaks down, or you just find you keep yourself, keep coming back to it, just keep coming back to it. And again, it's just it's just play at the end of the day. So just play with it like this. Okay, we'll take a little break. Quick one minute or so. Us. Domo. Right. So just quick, quick, quick. We'll start at five past. Just three, three, two, three minutes.